Elizabeth Warren, also known as Pocahontas, has released her health care plan, which is virtually identical to Bernie Sanders' health care plan. And this Medicare for All plan would completely abolish private health care, create tens of trillions of dollars in new taxes, shift tens of trillions of dollars in the U.S. economy. And even though she'd criticized single payer health care as recently as 2012, I guess she's all for it now. So anyways, I figured before we embark on the epic fall Midwest tour, I just give everyone a reminder that taxation is theft. So stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, Kami. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Heck Off, Kami. It's happening. The epic fall Midwest tour. And if you're watching this pre-recorded message, it's probably happening as we speak. I'm probably on the road. So if you're in Wisconsin or Ohio, be sure to come out. More information in the description. Um, also, you might ask, how is this possible? Well, we've got support from guys like Caleb, guys like Kyle, guys like Brandon. These are all guys who have gone to work, invested their time and resources into providing value because they recognize human nature. They recognize the human response to incentives. And then they decided to support the channel, which is very epic. Obviously, a very high IQ decision. And, you know, if it weren't for men like that, there would be no epic fall Midwest tour, and that would be sad. But anyway. Anyways, I feel like screeching about taxes today, so that's what we're going to do because if a socialist gets into office in 2020, our taxes are going to go up, and not only are they going to go up, they're going to go up in order to fund the healthcare of people that are not you. So, hope you're excited for this opportunity you have to be generous. And actually, that's the first thing I want to talk about. Elizabeth Warren added a calculator, a calculator, calculator <laughs> to her website that says calculator for billionaires. Uh, it starts off by saying some people are confused about how much they would pay under Elizabeth Warren's ultra millionaire tax. Don't worry. Now we have a calculator for that. And so the first question is just, are you a billionaire? And if you answer no to this question, it redirects you to a list of wealthy people. And then it gives you the option to click on them and find out how much they would be paying. And this list includes the, uh, what's a face DeVos family, Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Jim Waltz, and people like that. And so you can find out how much they would pay in a wealth tax under her plan. But if you answer that you're a billionaire, it'll ask you what your net worth is. So I'll just say like $5 billion. And then this is where it gets very unsettling. You say your net worth is $5 billion, And the very next screen says, wow, you've got a lot of money. Your wealth puts you in the top whatever percent of Americans. Now you have the opportunity to invest some of it back into our society. So everyone has a chance to succeed. You'd pay $259 million next year under Elizabeth's wealth tax. This amount, which you likely won't even feel, will help us invest in education from birth through college and help finance health care for everyone. Good news. You'll still be extraordinarily rich. And if history is any guide, if you do nothing other than invest your wealth in the stock market, it will likely continue to grow. It's like, do you notice how passive aggressive, like the tone of this? Like, wow, look at you. You've got a lot of money. That's so special, isn't it? Good for you. That's the mentality of people that work in government. They don't create wealth. They don't employ people. They don't have to worry about overhead. They basically do nothing. And then they vote to give themselves a raise, which comes out of your paycheck. So it's like, wow, you've got a lot of money. Like, yeah, I know I do. Cause I work 70 hours a week, dummy. Jeff Bezos can ship me a couch in less than 24 hours. We're supposed to just pat him on the head. Like, wow, look at you go. You got a lot of money. Look at this. Why are you surprised? Why are you excited about his wealth? I mean, obviously like you're excited about it because you're going to take it. But there's no reason to be in awe that the wealthiest people in our country have lots of money. Look at how they've spent their lives. Look at the innovation. That wealth was earned. And the next part really is my favorite. Uh, she says, now you have the opportunity to invest some of it back into society so everyone has a chance to succeed. First of all, it's not an opportunity. It's mandatory. That would be like sticking a gun in someone's face and saying like, now you have the opportunity to pay for my new phone. Also, if you're born into the United States of America, you automatically have a chance to succeed. And we can see how she's defining success in the next part because she says that you'll be paying, in this case, $259 million, which you likely won't even feel. And that's gonna go towards education and healthcare for everyone. By the way, why does she get to tell me that $259 million in, like in this case, is a fair amount. Like, why does she get to tell me how much of my money it's okay to take? Why does she get to tell me how much of my money I don't actually need? I can probably afford to spare $259 million. Like, if I wanna spend $259 million on $52 million $5 Phillips, that is my God-given right as an American. Also, it is literally impossible in this country to get rich without investing your money into society because what's the composition of society? It's composed of individuals, how do you get rich? You participate in voluntary transactions with individuals. Like I made $300 about cutting lawns in the summer of 2012 because I invested my labor into society and I was compensated for it. Bill Gates has invested his labor and his genius into products that have benefited societies in ways that we can't even comprehend or articulate. And he's been rewarded through that. In fact, the only way to get rich in this country 
without actually investing fairly and voluntarily into society is to go to DC and become a corrupt, power-hungry, soulless hack. And yeah, I'm getting defensive over my hypothetical five billion, but it's the principle that matters. Anyways, I've got three reasons that taxation is dumb, so we're gonna go through those now. Reason number one, taxation is evil. Now, throughout this, I'm primarily talking about the proportion of our tax money that isn't going towards things like my roads, like we can have that debate, but I'm really focusing on entitlements because by definition, that is money that is being taken from your paycheck and redistributed to another person. That is governmentally facilitated extortion. Of the total revenue that Uncle Sam gets, 52% of that goes towards the major entitlements. Those would be things like Medicaid, Medicare, Social Security, stuff like that. And then we've got an additional 17% going towards income security, which has some good components like veterans benefits, uh, but it's also got food and housing assistance. So all of that generally needs to be reformed. But the reason I say that it's evil is that you are taking my money away from me at the barrel of a gun. And what that really means is that you are taking my time away from me. You are taking my life away from me. Let's say that you're paying 20% of your income in taxes. That means that if you get up and go to work five days a week, every Monday when you go to work, you're not working for yourself. You're not working for your family. You're working for the government. You are their slave and you can't opt out of it. Well, it's the contract for using the services that they provide. Really? What I never signed a contract. What if I don't even use their services? Can I opt out? Well, no, exactly. I would sign that contract in a heartbeat. Show me a contract that says you can never personally rely on the government for any services other than national defense and infrastructure, and in exchange, we will only tax you for those services. I would say, where do I sign? Show me where that contract is. That contract will never exist because the system that we have now exists to take from those that provide for themselves and redistribute it to those that don't provide for themselves. Just look at the proportion of taxes paid by the top one, top 50% of income earners. And the reason that they advocate for it isn't because they believe that it's moral, it's because it allows them to personally benefit from it by assuming power, collecting a high salary for overseeing this whole thing. They're just along for the ride. And even if their hearts were in the right place, you can't create morality by stealing from people. I cannot rob you and donate the money to a charity and claim that what I have done is moral. You're entitled to the fruits of your labor. And if you don't wanna contribute that to paying for the healthcare of others, that's perfectly fine. It's your labor, it's your time, therefore it's your decision. And the reason it's forced is because it has to be. People who can provide for themselves, they don't need these services. And if it were really in human nature to just be unconditionally charitable, people would be doing it themselves without the need for government coercion. The system is reliant on those who work, providing for those who don't work. That's it. And again, let me clarify, I'm not saying that everyone who uses these services is taking advantage, um, taking advantage of them, but the fact of the matter is that we have more than enough money to provide security for those people, but the reason that they're unsustainable and the reason they're draining us is because people are taking advantage of these systems and no one in Washington is going to do anything about it because they need the votes from those people to stay in power. So basically, it's like the people in Washington giving your money away in order to remain in power. So. Moving on, reason number two, it's anti-American. The redistribution of wealth is anti-American. We are supposed to be equal under the law. How is taxing me at a higher rate simply because I earn more money a component of equality? How is discriminating against me? How is burdening me with forcing me to give a higher proportion of my income to the state? How is that equality? It's not equality in the true sense, but rather it is their attempt at forcing an equal outcome. There's a reason that a progressive income tax was the second plank of 10 outlined by Karl Marx in the Communist Manifesto. It's a denial of the human reality of inequality. In a free market economy, you get rich by providing things to your fellow man through voluntary transactions, and no two human beings are equal in skill, intelligence, aptitude, etc. So there will inexorably be inequality of outcome. And the socialists know this and they capitalize on the human proclivity towards envy by convincing people that they're being exploited in order to destabilize society. Because remember, the goal of the socialists is to destabilize the society so that there's a revolution and then they instill their utopia. That's their goal. Like that's how it's outlined in their texts. They don't believe that Bill Gates is rich because he provided things to the society that it wanted. They believe that he's rich because he exploited people and therefore his wealth isn't really his and therefore he is not entitled to it. It should be redistributed to the less wealthy through a progressive income tax that finances a vast social program network. Never mind that this is less efficient and that it's more efficient to let people keep their money and invest into their businesses, into their communities, and then we all grow wealthier together by pursuing our own interests. They don't want to do that because if you do that, if you decentralize the power like that, it makes it very difficult to control people. The American way is supposed to be self-reliant, independent, best man for the job. If you want something, you go out and get it. Like it. It's not supposed to be doing that and then being punished by having your money siphoned to support those that chose not to take that route. 
And lastly, number three, it's self-propagating. Like it never stops, it feeds itself. And the only way that it's ever going to stop is if we cut taxes, because they're never gonna stop spending money. Their job is literally to spend money to create bureaucracy, which then has an incentive not to solve the problem, but to perpetuate its own existence. And you've got these bureaucrats spending money that isn't theirs on things that won't affect them. And I don't know where this comes from, uh, but I'll finish with this. This is something that I was told, I <laughs> I don't know when, but it was by a baby boomer. So they probably heard it on talk radio at some point. Actually, no, I know exactly where, this is an old um, Milton Friedman demonstration. So basically it says that you've got four ways that you can spend money. You can spend your own money on yourself. And when you do this, you're concerned about the cost because after all, it is your money. And then you're also concerned about the quality because it's going to be for you. Or you can spend your money on someone else, in which case you're still concerned about the cost because it's your money, but you're not necessarily as concerned with the quality because it won't directly affect you. Or you can spend someone else's money on yourself, in which case you're not terribly concerned with the cost because it's not your money, but you are concerned with the quality because it does directly affect you. And lastly, you have the way the government spends money, which is spending someone else's money on someone else, in which case you're not concerned with the cost nor the quality because it's not your money and it's not going to affect you, so who cares? And you wonder why the government sucks at everything it does because the system is set up so that it doesn't have to not suck, basically. Hey guys, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, give it a big comment with your thoughts, and give it a big subscribe to the channel, because that would make me really happy. And if I'm not happy, I'm not gonna wanna make videos, because I'll be sad. No one wants to make videos when they're sad. They just wanna... What do people do when they're sad? More on this later. We will come back with an answer. But thank you so much for watching, and may God bless America.